Jim Klosk, who are from Science Systems Applications Incorporated. Okay, so in addition, we have several of your mentors that have been with you all week that are serving on panel as well. So for the viewers that are not here uh, with us in person, this is a culmination of a week's worth of, of hard work, uh, teamwork, and application of good communication skills, but these students have also earned the right to be here this week and have uh, completed a six-month online course in which they received two college credits in entry to aerospace engineering. The students, for their participation this summer, are also receiving two college credits in cooperative education in mechanical engineering. So uh, at this time, we are going to have the preliminary mission design review. We understand that this is the first step in it, uh, the mission design review process. We also understand that these students have worked hard to pull together their architecture. There are some things where there will be some holes in what they've developed, uh, and there may be some questions for them. But I think that you're going to be quite pleased with uh, what the students have been capable of doing in less than a week's period of time. So at this time, I would like to introduce for uh, this mission design review, which the students had to put together a human sample return mission to Mars, we now have the mission integration team.
condition listed are the constraints of importance. The time frame provided to us ranges from 2035 to 2060 and will include at least 30 days of service day in a duration no more than 10 years. We were required to have a minimum crew of two. As you will see later, our mission will have a crew size of six. The probability of loss of mission cannot exceed 30%. The technologies that we will develop for this mission must be sustainable, meaning that they must be able to be used for more than one mission. We, allow to, we are allowed to include in-situ resource utilization, or ISRU. We have to stay within our bu cost budget total. We have to include at least one international partner in some capacity in the mission. Hello, my name is Matthew Fox, and I will be talking about the timeline of this mission. As seen behind me, the, there's going to be two different launches from the surface of Earth, one with the cargo and one with the actual crew. The first launch with the cargo will be launched on July 27, 2049, and will last approximately eight months in, eight months in transit to get to Mar the Martian surface. And then the second launch will um, the second launch will be lifted from the Earth's surface on February 12, 2054, and will last approximately 11 months. There will be a total duration of three months on the Martian surface, and then. Three, after that three months is up, the crew and the samples that they have obtained will lift off from the Martian surface on April 17, 2055, and their transit back to the Earth's surface will last approximately six and a half months. Now the reason for the approximately three and a half year difference between the launch of the cargo and the launch of the crew is that the blue team needs time to make methane, gas, make methane oxide to fuel the propellant to lift off into low Martian orbit to complete the transit back to low Earth orbit. Uh, hello, I'm Emily Moda, and I'm talking about mission success. Uh, we define full, uh, partial, and minimum success. Uh, full success is accomplishing all of our goals, which were to land a human crew on Mars and return the crew back to Earth alive. Um, to establish a service base on Mars and to return one metric ton of samples to Earth. Uh, the partial success is um, only some of those goals, which we still want to uh, send the human crew to Mars and bring them back alive. Um, and we want to achieve partially um, some of our science objectives. And the minimum success is um, only to send them to Mars and bring them back alive. And our loss of mission percentage, we believe, is less than 30 percent uh, because we have triple redundancy in a lot of our systems, uh, the critical systems. Um, we have abort plans um, for when they're in space as they will be detailed later. And um, we have the same regard for the crew's life as the space shuttle, um, which means the crew safety is of, of the highest priority. And uh, their loss of vehicle percentage was only 0.76. Hello, my name is Aaron Teeling, and I'll be discussing the crew selection requirements. The crew shall be composed of six human crew members, two of whom will be Russian. And the human element, which is harder to monitor and control than robotic systems, offers creativity and adaptability unavailable to robot missions. Humans are also able to survive environmental conditions, for example, dust storms, which could potentially disable robotic equipment. And they're also able to react to sudden occurrences, especially weather events faster than robots because they do not have to accommodate for a communications delay. And as requested by mission headquarters, at least one international partner is required for this mission. To fulfill this requirement, we shall include two Russian crew members on the mission.